Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Matt Moy, Vincent Arroyo Family Winery Winemaker, and uh, we're going to do some more of these virtual uh, videos for you guys out there that are still holed up in your homes. Uh, we are open now here at the winery. Um, this is our new tasting room. Um, we're going to be doing them outside for the time being, and uh, we've started seeing several customers coming back. and. We welcome that. We have a lot of protocols uh, with masks and sanitation and whatnot. And uh, if you are interested in coming, we will definitely inform you of how that all works. But it's been fun. It's been great to see people again. And uh, we're back in, in business. Um, so I thought today we might want to do some tastings of our library wines, which we still have uh, available on our website. Or you can actually have some, pick some up here at the winery as well. But um, the first wine I was going to try out for today. Um, actually, you see we have our little flags here. Um, we're going to try different regions of grapes. Uh, so for today, we're going to do the Bordeaux region of France. Um, we grow um, four of the five Bordeaux grapes uh, on our estate. Uh, if you go to Bordeaux, France, uh, they grow five reds. You have Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Merlot. Um, we grow all but Cabernet Franc, so we used to have Cabernet Franc going into our JJ's blend, uh, but unfortunately, as you hear Rosie in the back, um, but unfortunately we, we pulled that out, so we only have the four of the five. So um, I thought we'd pull some of the libraries out of uh, Bordeaux varietals that we grow, and the first one we're going to try is the 2011 Merlot. As you can see, some of you may have this in your wine cellar. Um, the 11 vintage uh, was a challenging year. Um, it was a year where we... Um, had a lot of rain and it came early and so uh, we had to fight uh, a lot of mildew pressure a little bit of rot that we had to sort out in our sorting table so it was it was more of a, a, a wet year um, but it, it was a great vintage and I think tasting it now you'll see how much better it has gotten in the aging process you can smell a little bit of a blueberry smell to this Merlot uh, this is 100% Merlot. The alcohol on this one was 13.8%. Um, we did about 300 cases of it. Uh, Merlot has a problem with people, uh, the fact that um, a lot of people don't want to try Merlot. They have an odd sense of something, something that they don't like about it. Um, I think what happened uh, in the early 90s, uh, a winery down the road from us, uh, uh, Duckhorn, came out with a straight Merlot. and um, before that, Merlot was used more or less for a blending grape. So when they did come out with that straight Merlot, people tasted it and went crazy for it. It was And it was fantastic. Um, but with that, people started putting Merlot in places where it should never have been planted to begin with. And then uh, eventually people started tasting Merlots from those particular vineyards. And they said, oh, that's not what I thought Merlot was going to be like. And, and in essence, it shouldn't have been that way. And, and so the, the pendulum swung to other varietals, and, and for right now it seems to be in the, the Pinot Noir uh, wheelhouse. Um, but unfortunately we see the same thing happen with Pinot Noir in Calistoga, where we are way too hot to grow Pinot Noir, but there are growers here that are growing it, and I think uh, people are going to start tasting some of those Pinots from these re or this region, and think that's what Pinot is, it doesn't taste very good. Well, of course it doesn't, it's not supposed to be here. And I think the pendulum will go somewhere else. Where that pendulum swings, I don't know. But I think a lot of our farmers in the Napa Valley have uh, hedged on Cabernet as their safest uh, place to uh, put their, their growing grapes in. So um, we'll see where it goes. But uh, this is our 2011 Merlot. And this is a big Merlot for us. I mean, it's, it's it tastes really good. It's um, we use French oak on the on the, the uh, wood for it. Um, it's 100 percent. We have about three or four blocks of Merlot growing on the 85 acres that we have up here, dry farmed like everything else. Um, and I think uh, if you do get a chance to try a Merlot, I think you'd be quite surprised. It's it's a great wine. It's a great varietal. It just has to be grown in the right place. Okay, so that was Merlot. Let's see, the next one we're going to try from Bordeaux Grapes is our 2012 Bodega. So Bodega is a um, is our chocolate lab that's here. She makes a Cabernet, it's a Cab Malbec Petit Verdot blend. This particular vintage is 65% Cab, 20% Malbec, 15% Petit Verdot. 
Um, the uh, so this is three of the five Bordeaux. a lot of tannin still so it's 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 still drinking really well but I think you probably have a couple more years on this one this was what 12 almost 13 percent alcohol 245 cases that we did you can see Bodega has their little pop rinse on there as well um, Bodega if those of you who don't know um, uh, is our chocolate lab uh, we got my wife and I got married over in Bodega Bay which is on the coast of California here and uh, we uh, she gave me Bodega as a wedding gift, so we named her Bodega, and um, she came back to the winery with us, and she's grown up here for now, going on 15 years, and uh, so when we wanted to name her, we named her Bodega after where we were married, and if you go to Spain, where the Arroyo family is from, the Bodega uh, means winery, so if we had to call our wine winery uh, in Spain, it would be Bodega de Arroyo, and so it kind of fit into the whole play on things. Uh, Bodega in Spanish is translated into, or into English, a uh, storage place. Um, but the irony is that we have customers that are in the larger cities that uh, Bodega means, uh, is their corner store. So in essence, it's like 7-Eleven. So customers would come in and say, Bodega, why would you name your dog like a 7-Eleven? I said, well, that's not really where, we, where we're going with that, but uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, named some wineries in Spain so that's kind of it fit into the whole story of what we do here um, like I say she's been here for 15 years and uh, she's still going strong comes to work every day um, this wine is, is tasting pretty good you can taste the French oak on this particular wine I think with our bodega we generally use about 75% new barrels so it sees a lot of new oak on on the wine um, it's all French um, and uh, it, uh, it definitely gives it that more mouthfeel that you want to feel in that, that bigger Bordeaux blend that we did. Um, but good, good wine, good wine. So let's see, that our, our last wine that we're going to try today is going to be our 2012 uh, Cap. So um, this one is 13.45 uh, alcohol. We did about 800 cases of it. Um, all French oak as well. Um, we make three, or we used to, we were making three Cabernets here. We had um, this cap here. We do a reserve cap, which is barrel aged for three years, and then we do the rattlesnake cap, which is a single vineyard cap. Um, this year, the 2017 release, which actually I say last year's release, uh, was the last of this particular cap. So going forward, we will only have the rattlesnake cap and the reserve cap. Um, so uh, the uh, 2012 cab uh, was bottled 2014, so our, our most of our red wines are barrel aged for two years. So that's uh, generally what we do with our reds. Our whites are here for a year, and then our reserves are for three years. Oh, lots of fruit. Lots of lots of fruit. Um, I, I get, what is that? Maybe cherry licorice, kind of? flavor <laughs> kind of weird but it's 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 very fruit forward for being eight years old it's it's held its fruit really really well um, but tannin is, is 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 soft so it's it's way it's very easy drinking for a cab yeah it's I think uh, this is a good vintage 2012 was a wetter year too as what well, same as the 11 um, uh, and oftentimes in the Napa Valley, we tend to see the odd years being the better years. And, and, and for some reason, the 12 kind of didn't get the message and um, it, it, it's up there with every one of the odd years that we've had. Um, I mean, uh, the bean counters will always tell you every year is a good year, but uh, for us, it, it tends to see more of the, the odd years as being better. But the 12 was an oddity and and and, and it could hold its own with with all the odd years um so it's it's drinking really well we have a lot of these wines still available in the tasting room and, and online so if you want to try any of those uh just give us a call we'll ship them out to you 
Um, again, we're also doing tastings here at the winery. We're open. You can see here is uh, the new lawn area that we've uh, redone. And we have sanitized tables and everyone is inside the winery right now uh, working. Um, we have a couple appointments coming up on the hour, so we're, I gotta get, get moving so I get out of their way. But uh, we hope you can come and see us and uh, stay safe. Uh, if we can do anything for you guys, let us know. Uh, cheers, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next Friday.